Yo, it's your favorite stringer. Favorite stringer, Mans and Crosses here. Guys, it's been a crazy week, and with all these episodes coming out every single Friday now, I'm doing content way beforehand. And, uh, you know, because I want to release them every day, but, like, it's going to be too much for me and too much for you guys. Like, you know, I just kind of let it out slowly, let kind of things sink, see how things go. And, you know, going back to the analytics, and I was like, well, I've got 40 views on this. It's been out for a couple days. Maybe a comment here or two. I, I wish I had, like, 2,000 views or 10,000 views, whatever it may be. Um, unfortunately, it's not there yet. And that's probably a good thing. It needs, I need to be in pain. I need to have pressure set on me. Like, hey, I'm putting out all these content. Why is it not working? So the first thing I'm thinking like, hey, is it the video editing? Is it the description? Is it the hashtag I'm not using? So it, it it's me that have to go back and look at, hey, if I tweak this, will this make it better? And with the help of AI, ChatGPT, um, Opus Pro, you know, making these content is very easy. If you're like me, who's like, I don't want to spend countless minutes trying to figure out what I want to say in this description. Is there's gonna be a typo, um, grammar issues? Dude, it does it all for you guys. Um, subscribe to ChatGPT, um, get the pro version. It's only like what 15, 20 bucks a month. I think it's well worth it just to kind of have that extra gig or memory to kind of fit into whatever you're doing. So let's say you're you're talking about tennis string. It's gonna keep that information for quite a while, and you can build on that. It's like hey, on top of this. Um, listing you had on eBay can you make me a description for a blog can you transcript this video that I'm making into a vlog blog whatever and there goes that and what did I say vertically integrated businesses you know I mentioned this in the last video when you have things that are separate from your original business let's say you're a tennis trainer but you have a Facebook page you have YouTube you have um, blogs, vlogs, you have TikTok, you have all these stuff on the side. Those credibility, even though you're spending countless hours and countless time, maybe you're not making the money, maybe you're not even getting traction. However, your digital identity is imprinted out there. You know, and, and when people gather those information, hey, what kind of expert is he? You know, first thing I would look at is like, hey, I'm gonna go check out his Instagram page, check out social media. If somebody wants a marketing job with me, I was like, hey, let me see what they're doing. And they don't have any of that. They don't even have basic... Not even LinkedIn, you know, but they don't have a basic Facebook or Instagram page and stuff like that. I would be like, you know, why not? Why weren't you thinking ahead? Like those are the foundation of, of building a solid, um, you know, s social media marketing platform. So, yeah, that's that's my intake. But for me, everybody's like Smitty, you know. Um, the elephant's always in the rooms when we talk about money. And I think it's it's weird. We're raising a society where it's like, you know, like, when did talking about money become an issue? And, you know, in time, he's like, hey, you know, I heard about your, your wife, you know. Um, he, I heard she cheated on you. And like, oh, yeah, man, she went with my best friend. You know, I hooked up, blah, blah, blah. They'll tell you all that when you ask them, yo, hey, who do you finance with? You know, how, many, how much you got in your savings? Man, man, that, that, that's too private, man. Man, that's too private. I don't want to talk about that. Let's not talk about that. That's, you know, that's, that's personal information. Dude, that's the craziest thing. We're like, hey, you put out all this stuff in open. Oh, he cheating on me. Oh, you know, look at this baddie. Look, I'm working out, you know, 24 hours a day. I'm making this much money. You know, I'm, I'm flexing all this stuff. But when they talk about your bank account or talk about your finances and how you manage money, it's like nobody wants to talk about it, which is horrible because we should talk about it. This is the most important thing because, like, making – these type of decisions, it will, will kind of like help out. If I don't put it out there, say, hey, you know what? I went down this path and it didn't work out well. I should warn this guy like, hey, don't do that. Or, you know, do it differently from what I did. And I figure all these experiences, both positive and negatives, are, are, are those stepping stones for success. You know, if I didn't, you know, buy some crap coins like Doge or whatever, I'm still invested in it. If I didn't put my foot into it, I wouldn't have known. You know, people were up like, I was up thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. And I learned like, hey, I should just sold when I was in profit. Times a thousand, times a hundred, whatever. Um, maybe holding isn't the best thing. So I had to, I had to learn that. And sometimes I learned a couple ways, a couple times, different until they realize like, hey, when you're up, it's nice to take those profits. Anyway, let's not talk about all that crypto stuff, but let's talk about the whole finance thing. Let's talk about money. Like, 
Hey, Smitty, why is your, all your posts about money, making money, selling real? Why are you talking about raising prices? Why are you, you know, money hungry? Oh, no, 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 I'm not wealthy. <laughs> and I'm, not, I'm definitely not money hungry. I enjoy the pursuit of money or the pursuit of that. You know, when you have wealth, it's basically to, the wealth really means like you have the capabilities of doing what you want on your own time. And what that means, if you have full wealth, like if I was gonna wake up tomorrow and not do a darn thing, I got money, like I, I decide I'm gonna go to Thailand tomorrow. That's, that's wealth. That's, that's not like, hey, I got like tens of millions in the bank and stuff like that. Like you're like, oh, I'm gonna greet him and get more and more and more and more. No, no. Especially if I if I wanted to be wealthy and, and all this stuff, it wouldn't be in the tennis industry. Definitely not. It's a small niche. Um, it's definitely infested with a like-minded, straight, narrow path thinking. And let me give you a prime example of, uh, I'm not going to say a brand, but let's think of a classic brand. A brand that your parents play with, pretty well known, you know, made in the U.S., strong. Um, you know, they own a couple rights to um, Grand Slams. You kind of know what I'm talking about. But everybody always grew up like, hey, my dad played that. That's classic. I'm going to wear that. I want to I wanna, I wanna buy that because, I'm, you know, it's a classic. Look at all these players associated with them. But then come along after a couple of generations, things like that you you let go of what made you great. You're like, hey, we're just gonna stick on a legacy and just build upon the past. And it works to a certain point, and then all of a sudden it drops off because the trend changed, the vibe changed, and now you're just stuck with, hey, well, this is your, this is a classic. You know, this brand's been out since your grandfather, your great grandfather. Have some respect. Eh, kids nowadays, they have their mind on their own, you know? What be cool to you back in the days or what seems to be right, they would do the opposite. Think about the brand like, uh, like Yonex. Yonex, look at some of their players. Some, they had some issues, right? Nayo Osaka, mental issue, health issues, emotional issues. Nick Kyrgios claimed that he hated tennis. He's just doing it because he's He's just, he would be playing basketball if he had, a, he had a second chance. They didn't shun them away. They didn't say no. They were like, huh? Let the kid play. The kid can play. He's doing good. He's, you know, he's, he's developing, he's growing, even though he's breaking the rackets left and right here and there. Let's give him a chance. They stuck with him, you know? Other brands would be like, oh, I don't want anything associated with him. So there we go. You know, you kind of have to look at the culture. And what have gotten us to where our position are is right now is looking towards the future without looking at certain data. It did help us predict some future risk. And sometimes the risk is good and it turned out well. And it's like, oh my God, see, I saw it. I saw it. But then, you know, I would say like six out of 10 times we're in the wrong. But those four times that were right, were spot on. You know, there's that post that I did about this current year's uh, Wilson's, um, you know, green and blue neon vibe, the collaboration of their, their outfit this year. It looked really familiar with what we wore five years ago, four years ago. And people were asking me like, hey, why are you hating it? And he's like, are you, are you telling me Wilson and then that team is copying you? Like, no, nothing like that. We saw that design. We saw the creativity, that design, that bold text, logo, plain, big bold print right in the back of the shirt, US Open style, bold, American, in your face, neon. And we're like, we string rackets. And that's all we did. We put those words in our back in bold letters. We thought that was gonna be the trend. We thought like, hey, that's, that's some fire. And at the time, people were like, oh, that was cool. But they didn't think about it. But now, Wilson's having a line in collaboration of the NYC US Open Series 2024. Go take a look at the videos or the pictures. Uh, I'll have it up sometime if I can link it up. But 
it wasn't about like anybody copying it or you know if they stole our idea or whatever it's more like hey man we thought of that style way before you guys even thought of it that wasn't by accident and that wasn't really by tennis and I, I love the way that tennis is going with the whole fashion thing you know Technifib or Technifibro is you know with Lacoste and you just I think you saw some stuff with like Gucci and another brand um, anyway they're collaborating with high luxury style you saw that with crossover Wilson and Bape um, pretty big things back in like 2020, 2021, they had, uh, you know, right before the pandemic, they had a lot of collaboration stuff. And I thought that was a great thing. Um, but we saw, we, we imagined every single color of those rackets. Every year that it comes out, we're like, we called it, we called it. Look at the color. Look at the colors that Mains and Crosses use. They became an in color, maybe in the last two, three years. That neon green, that pink. Look at these lavender colors on, um, like Easter. I told you guys I love pastel. And the kids like it too. And I think it's one of the things that like you have to see what the culture is, the clothing, the style. So this is how we thought. You know, it had nothing to do with tennis. Like I said, we looked at the culture. So what are the kids who play tennis? Or what, actually, not even that. What's the fashion style? So I look at, hey, what's the music genre? What's the fashion? What's in right now? All right, next layer. People who listen to music, what would they wear? All right, so tennis players who listen to these these artists is popping right now. What's the fashion? What's the fashion in UK? What's the fashion in Hong Kong? What's the fashion in, in Japan? Things like that, right? So I keep on narrowing it down. I go to Kalamazoo, what are these kids wearing? What are these tennis cool kids wearing? And then from then you can make educated guess. But no, a lot of these brands, and I tell Slinko too, and I tell I, I can't talk, I have NDAs that I can't really talk you know, about these things, but I, we do have discussions about, you have all these people doing data. And for me, what data is in, in business is past information. You're making assumptions off of past information. And it might work, you know, if this was an exponential linear chart or if this was maybe stocks or you know, things like, you know, things like that. However, when it comes to fashion, things are in and out. You know, before, your parents would have one suit, four suits, right? Maybe grandparents had four suits, they would take great care of it. Oh, they would wear it every day. They would just switch it up. And if there was an issue, they'll, they'll sew it up. They'll send it to, um, you know, the cleaners, do things like that. But now we have momentarily fashion wear, like H&M, Zara, um, you name it. Um, things like that, where it comes in and out. And the clothes are cheap, it'll break down, but it was only 20, 30 bucks, who cares? I'm not spending $1,000 on a jacket. I bought this from H&M, it was on the sales rack for 30 bucks. We'll buy that, and then we'll just throw it away. You know, Goodwill store, whatever. You know, we do that now. So when you get data, it's past information. So if you're trying to plan for the future using past information, isn't that crazy? Especially in the tennis world, like, hey, last year, you know, it was so many, like two years ago, okay, let's have like two years ago, there was a lot of Slinko Hyper-G, banging, banging, almost everybody, everybody, and so Rackets, everybody had Wilson. Come last year, hmm, Yonix, a little bit more Yonix, a little more PTP, still some Wilson out there, you know, you still see some Blades, some Clash, some Pro Staff. 2024. A little bit of Selenko, Tour Bites in, Hyper G is still definitely there. But I see a lot of yellow fluorescent strings and it's on Yonex's racket. Wow. They took the market out of nowhere. And you know, when when a player gets that string, the package, you know, you know, when they get the, the rackets and the bags, they're gonna get the strings too. So guys, when you, when you think about the future, think about what data are you collecting? You know, For me, I would test out so many hypotheses. I would, I would try out with so many things and then come back and say, hey, which one we didn't do? Which one turned out right? Which one turned out wrong? Take a chance. I'd rather do that and fail versus like, hey, let's do the same old thing because you're just recycling. And kids know that. And then you know these events, you know, you're always two steps behind because 
the trends past. Be better than that. Be ahead of the game. You know, when people pay us for, for marketing and consulting, they're, they're not paying me, you know, for previous, my stringing experience or previous intels I had. It's more like, hey, I can kind of tell, predict certain things that you can't. And maybe because I'm outside of the tennis industry, maybe because I'm not like, you know, tunnel vision, I can see these holes that, that you guys have. So they come to me for, to consult on, hey, why didn't this work? Or what do you think the next trend will be? And I'll be like, hey, look at this, look at this. I'll give you some options. And these are the type of events you should do. Check this out. And I would always tell them, give them a challenge. Like, hey, if you had unlimited funds, unlimited budgets, what would you do? And, you know, they go all out and have fun. Like, dude, I would have a player's shower and, you know, champagne and food spread. And, you know, I'll have somebody running their rackets, you know, in, into on, on court. All the Slinko players would get, like, goodie bags and swag. So I told them, like, hey, if that budget was, like, $10,000, $20,000, $50,000, let's say $100,000. And to go all out, can you do it? It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll set this all up. I have the right people. We'll get collaborations here and there. And then I tell them, hey. How about if I scale it back? Let's say I give you 500 bucks. Well, how can you do it with 500? And they're like, well, I can't have a personal runner all the time. You can't probably get that shower, but we probably can ask like the school maybe if they can just set off um, you know, a shower in the gym that the players, the Slinko players can use. And you know, we'll ask for donations, things like that. So you'll scale small. Think about even with a high budget, you're still doing the same thing, but it's just like, you know, a little bit more, a little less, but it's still the same thing. So Learn how to scale. Give them options, right? Don't give them too many options. Three, Goldilocks effect, right? Give them like, hey, if you had a hundred thousand dollar budget, boom, give them a five hundred dollar budget. They feel pretty tired in that five hundred. Like, you, I almost can't do any of this. What's in that middle? What's what's a good price? Like, can you do for two thousand? Yeah, I probably could, because you know, a hundred thousand way it's way big. So this is the thing you gotta think about when you're creative. When you're When you're a creative, when you're um, when you're somebody like us, you know, we always we don't want to take your money, right? But if we don't put value on our services, who will? You know, there's a quote like your you know your service is only as good as somebody's willing to pay. And I say that with the string too, like hey, your string is only as good as somebody would pay. You know. What are they willing to pay you? Are you high net worth? Are you the luxury Ferrari or you know Louis Vuitton, MS, Chanel? Or are you McDonald's or KFC? Nothing wrong with those, but not too many people want to associate their brands with fast food, right? And the challenge is turning your hobbies, your passion and your interests and talents into a sustainable like lifestyle. It doesn't be tennis, something like that. you enjoy like drawing. Like you should find a way to monetize that why don't you do it show people how to draw things like that you know be open-minded and and stop wait stop waiting for like there's no better time to act than now because you have a chance now and it's hard as you age and you, you can take less risk you know you you have to take less risk as you age because like hey your your f-ups can maximize now before when you're younger right think about it if you're a teenager right you, you got into some bad things you know got pulled over or got arrested for some juvenile stuff and you know, slap on the wrist like, hey billy get better you know and get better get better and then you know you're 20 like hey you're gonna do an overnighter but it's be fine you're gonna misdemeanor here and there and, you know we'll probably wipe it out of your records and then you f up again now you're you're in, like got a felony or whatever um and then maybe you get prison whatever it may be right you, you don't have that much leeway. So start now. I think that's one of the things like, hey, just set up and start, you know. It, it's, it's a poor idea not to act on it. Like, hey, if you have an idea and you, you want to go for it, just do it. And you got to get out of that, that box. Because a lot of people are like, I'm scared. Like, I hate being on YouTube. I hate hearing my voice. Like, that's the uncomfortable part. For me, that's the comfortable part. The hard part for me is like, hey, can you write down certain things? And can, you know, for me, it's more read, write type things. I can talk all day, you know? And I had to learn the hard way too, as far as like, you have to learn the lingo. You know, the language of business is like, if you don't know that, it may limit your growth. And you don't wanna regulate yourself to just taking orders and taking, you wanna be a leader. 
So you have to learn the business. You have to learn the words. You have to learn how to persuade, how to do sales. Because like I said, you're limiting yourself. You'll just be a, a waiter all day, taking orders, taking orders. Well, the chef and the owners, is, you know, they're probably doing bigger and better things. And the last thing is like, you know, the benefit of sharing your work, you know, just the things that I do. Like, I can just be like, hey, I'm, I'm doing all right. You know, I got a, I got a solid job. I got a you know, good string gig, stringing from home. Why do I need to make any more money? Of course, we can always make more money. However, I want to do this for you guys. I want to do this for the string. Like, stringing was my hobby or like that hustle that I wanted to do and everybody's like, hey, this is a bad idea. But we did it anyway. And you know, now it's, it's better than ever. You know, I'm getting my son. He's, he's hanging out here, Drake. He's drawing me my logo, yeah, which yeah. I think it should be done. But the benefit of sharing your work is, if we don't share and write the content, you know, how will the people find us? Like, if we don't put anything out there, how would they find us? So I'm gonna leave you with this. The story was, I had an important string tournament that I wanted to do. And I didn't even know about it, but I, I knew it was around. But there was no way I was gonna get picked because there were so many veterans, so many great people out here. But for me, putting my name out there, making a social media, Instagram, Google, SEO, Facebook at the time, Yelp, all that stuff. It kind of helped me because the way they, they when they ha didn't have their original stringer, they went down Google and said, like, hey, who's stringing? And we were literally the first and only one that had like a solid Yelp review, Google, Facebook, website, Instagram, YouTube, you name it. They're like, hey, this guy's legit. I don't even know he can stream, but he, he's there. Let's give him a call. And they gave me a call and I literally asked him, how do you find me? He's like, yo, you know, honestly, we just searched for stringers in the area. And you were the first one and you were the first one to call back. Being responsive, being the, at the right place at the right time. It's like, hey, stop waiting and, you know, and act. I'd rather act on a poor idea. Like, this is probably not a good idea. I don't know if I can do a tournament. I tell you the truth. I just said, yes, I'm not even sure the machine was good enough. I didn't know if I can just do the load, but I was like, hey, this is my chance. I'm gonna jump on it. You know, I had a machine, it was like, I didn't even have a team. I had to go buy stencils. I didn't have the, the correct strings um, just in case something bad happened. I was like, you know what? This is my chance, let's go for it. And that paid off. And for the last three years of those tournaments, you know, they used me um, as their official stringer. And I get to meet players like Francis Tiafo, Naomi Osaka, Venus Williams, Nick Kyrgios, you name it. And you know, when they come to DC, they're like, yo, Mains and Crosby, yo, you hooked it up. And it was very more personal. It's not like one of those like ATP string room where it's kind of all serious. There's a lot of load. This is like laid back, relaxed. We had Nick Kiros playing Pokemon or Nishioka playing Pokemon cards with my kids. He's playing, you know, um, video games, FIFA, stuff like that, and just kind of chilling out. But it wouldn't be that, you know, that wouldn't have happened if I didn't set myself up. I didn't do, if I didn't do the basic foundation of business, which is having a social media present, having all those you know vertically integrated businesses aside from my string. If I didn't set those up, they wouldn't have found me, and they wouldn't have went with the next person or they, maybe the next shop. Who knows, right? And of course, a little bit of luck. You know, when you're you know, when your shot comes, you just gotta take it. And I'm thinking like the challenging is, like I said, turn your hobbies, your interests, your talents into long-term sustainable career. I think that's one of those biggest things that you know. I'm jotting down all the ideas I had and I'm like, dude, you know, same thing. Clothing, design, creatives, you know, that's like design is intelligence made into, made visible, you know. You had all this in your head, but if you create a design, you create a logo, you create a brand, right? And branding and logos aren't the same thing, you know. But when you can put that out, make it visible for people to see, then you're creating something and it's like, you don't have to chase that popularity or the money or the fame, you know, don't go chasing that because, you know, when you help people and you do things like that, I think for me, experiencing, you know, going down to the US Open and, you know, wearing that, we string rackets and they knew that was amazing crosses. That was kind of our hashtag, things like that. We're just walking down. And then once in a while, you get somebody tap on your back, like, yo, I see you on YouTube or I'm in your Instagram. And it, that's one person out of like thousands of people on the US Open. And like, I'm not even freaking Roger Federer or anything like that. It was like, hey, he. He knew my brand. He, he listened to my my podcast. He he followed my Instagram. He did all this stuff X Y Z, and you know, 
people don't fall in love with the corporations, you know, they, they, they fall in love with the, the personality, you know, Mason Cross is one thing, but, you know, people who get me and, and GIF and the family, they get me. And, you know, for those who haven't met me, I think that's one of the things, like, I have to do better myself, too, is not try to judge a book by its cover. But you really do, especially personality-wise and IQ and persuading. You know, perception is everything. I got to work better on that, too. And I'm not so young anymore, and I'm not as aggressive as before. But I think now it's like it's my call. It's like, hey, you know what? It might be just that one person who listened to this podcast or listened to this this YouTube and it's like, you know what? Something sparks something in me. It didn't have to be with tennis. Maybe it was like a relationship. Maybe it's family. Maybe it's a significant other. Maybe it's a wife, husband, whatever. You know, maybe this helps out. So I would, I want you to use, you know, the things that I said very loosely. Like, you know, associate with things in your life. Like, I'm not saying, hey, if you didn't start your tennis business, you know, you're not going to be able to, like, hey, if you wanted to do a hobby, if you wanted to ask that girl out, or you wanted to invest in a business, this is the perfect time. And and I believe you. And, of course, if you have any questions, feel free to subscribe, like, comment, all that stuff. I want to hear about it down there. And let's have a conversation. Let's keep this up. I'm enjoying this, and I definitely couldn't do it without you guys. So until the next episode, peace.